Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to another time here, another time to pray. Uh, I'm here in transit, so not my regular environment. So we're going to make best of all we have. So welcome. Welcome to a time to pray. Welcome to the upper room here. Um, going to lower my voice because I'm already. So we're going to make the best of all we have here. Um, so thanks. Thanks for, for coming. Um, Sorry, I had a quick recycle of the system here. Um, we've been doing a study through the book of Daniel, right? Uh, being stated in Daniel chapter 6 is 3, and pretty much taking a, a talk on uh, the excellent spirit from that, right? When taking each different attributes from Isaiah 11 verse 2. And the next one we'll look at is the spirit of knowledge, right? Uh, when you talk about an excellent spirit, it's not someone that is ignorant. Someone that has an excellent spirit is knowledgeable. He doesn't necessarily know everything, right? None of us knows everything, right? Like the Bible tells us, uh, Paul tells us uh, uh, that uh, we only know in parts, right? And we always know in part. We're not going to ever know everything. But you don't need everything to have an excellent spirit, right? Uh, an excellent spirit is not a perfect spirit, right? Perfection and excellence are not the same thing, right? There's a warning to have an excellent spirit. It's another thing to have a perfect spirit. When we're talking here about a perfect spirit, we're talking about an excellent spirit, right? And to have an excellent spirit, all you need to know is to know the things you know know the things you don't know right that means you're not someone that is dissociated from reality right you're not someone that is denying the reality of life you're not denying the facts of life right uh the spots the truth right so an excellent sport is an excellent spirit is able to distinguish between what are facts what are truth and be able to put them in their rightful place is able to um, not leave by opinion, right? That is able to um, go for the facts of the issue, not just opinion of people. Is that and the opinion is cheap, right? Anybody has every any and everybody has an opinion on everything, but the things they know and the things they don't know. One with an excellent spirit is not one with an opinion. Is one who be, who looks for the facts in a, every matter and judges them against what the truth is because facts are temporal truths are eternal so one who has an, an excellent spirit knows goes for truths and judges everything against what the truth of the matter is right he doesn't deny the facts he doesn't deny knowledge right and he knows what he knows what he doesn't know he knows where the who are the resource people huh he knows how to network with people and use the experience of others to achieve the aim of what he's intending to do right he knows that he, he's not going to achieve anything just on his own he understands what the place of a team is right so he, he bases himself on his strength and he knows how to delegate his weaknesses right and it's important when we talk about knowledge, right? One, one scripture, other scripture that comes to mind for me is Proverbs 25, verse 2, I guess. You know, we, it talks about the fact that um, a God, God hides a matter, right? God puts treasure to knowledge. He puts treasure to truth, right? And it's going to find treasure of knowledge, right? Just hanging out there, you know, it's going to be something that you're going to get because you want it not because you just stumble on it you don't stumble on gold you have to dig for gold to get it you know same thing with knowledge right it's going to make a difference for your life or you have to go out there to get it hey loretta how you doing loretta can you hear me all right good morning you Good morning. Bless you. Good to have you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for praying. Uh, Auntie Banke, you're welcome, ma'am. Uh, God bless you, sir. Bless you, ma'am. You're good to have you. Yeah. You're welcome, ma'am. Loretta, you're welcome again. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, I was just sure in the morning, you know, I was looking at Daniel chapter 6, verse 3, talks about Daniel having an excellent spirit. And we'll be sharing, looking at uh, Isaiah 11, verse 2, to look at different attributes. So what does it mean to have an 
an excellent spirit. And the next thing attribute that we we'll look at coming from Isaiah 11 too, is the spirit of knowledge, right? If you don't have knowledge, you cannot have an excellent spirit. More than excellent spirit is one who has knowledge. It's knowledgeable. Doesn't mean that he knows everything, right? Because none of us can ever know everything, right? But Apostle Paul tells us that we know in part. For as long as we're here, we're only going to know in part. We're never going to know everything. And then, and then someone with an excellent spirit understands and accepts that, right? He doesn't struggle with that. Meaning that it's always in a state of learning. He's never one that feels, hey, I'm going to do No. Anybody that says that is a, is a fool, right? Doesn't have an excellent spirit. He's not going to heaven. He's not going to have the riches of God in this life. You know, if you have an excellent spirit and you always know that you don't know, but you know, but you don't know. You know some things and you don't know some things. You know what you know, and you don't know what you don't know. And you know what you don't know so that you go to whoever knows it to help you, you know, because if you, if you truly know and you're knowledgeable, you know that you need a team to achieve all the things that you want to do because we all have strengths and weaknesses. There's only so much you can do on your own. You need other people to be able to cover the things you don't, you cannot do, you don't know, right? You don't try to struggle to be who you are not. You know who you are and you accept who you are for who you are, right? You're comfortable under your own skin. You don't feel like a stranger under your skin, right? Mm-hmm. If you, you have to, if you, for you to have an excellent spirit, you must be comfortable under your skin. You must accept who you are, love who you are, and live who you are, right? Mm-hmm. And that means your faults, your flaws, your strengths, your weaknesses, they all make you. It's not just your strength that makes you, right? It's everything about you that makes you, right? You have to first of all accept it to be able to work on it, right? If you have weaknesses in your life, you can't work on it with those weaknesses if you don't accept them, right? So it's knowing where you are, accepting where you are, then working with who you are, meaning that if the areas in your life that you need to strengthen, you will strengthen them. The areas in your life that you need to circumcise, you circumcise them, right? But you cannot do any of that unless you accept it, you know? And we see that God also said that my people perish for lack of knowledge, right? My people perish for foolishness. My people perish because they are deluded. Their people perish because they are deceived. My people perish because they think they know, but they know, right? You know, you know. If you don't have knowledge, if, you do, if you're not ready to accept reality, you're not going to miss it. You're not going to make it in this life, right? Reality is what it is. You don't struggle against reality. You use reality. You have to see what is, then use it, right? Not a lie to use you. For long as you struggle with reality, reality is using you, right? You cannot use what you are struggling with, right? And and lastly, you know, uh. Well, there's a scripture that I was going to, I was going to talk about, but it's, it's one of my head when it comes back. out. Well, yeah. And lastly, the Bible tells us that they that know their God, right? They'll be strong and they will do exploits, right? Mm-hmm. Knowledge is knowing God. And knowing God is having knowledge also because when you know God, you know everything about God, everything about his creation, because it's nothing that is, that is of its own, except true God, right? When you know God, that is God and everything about nature that he has created, right? So, and Bible says, when you do know God, then you will give you strength. Knowledge will give you strength. Those that know their God will be strong. And those are the people that can do exploit, right? Those are the people that can rout the enemy. Those are the people that can win wars, the battles of life. Those are the people that can excel in everyday activity of life because you need that knowledge as a weapon. You need that knowledge as a tool, right so knowledge is important but not for the sake of knowledge itself but for what you can use knowledge for right it's not about filling your head and say who i'm a professor i know this i mean knowledge that you cannot use knowledge that you cannot apply is useless knowledge right knowledge is not we don't know have knowledge for the sake of knowledge we have knowledge for the purpose of using it to achieve our purpose our vision our calling you know and may god help us all in jesus name Amen. 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 Anything you want to add, Loretta? You want to say anything to that? Nothing. No, you just said it all. Yeah, remember, it says not like a uh, uh, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, ask wisdom in all thy asking, ask for understanding. So, just like you rightly mentioned, that spirit of excellence is 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 aligning with wisdom, and that wisdom comes with understanding. 
So that's the way we can apply, uh, apply it. You said something, you said knowledge, knowledge that is not applied. Uh, knowledge that is not applied is something that is not relevant or useless. And that's true. Our knowledge of God, we need to start applying it, not just knowing God, but also showing off who God is in our life. Let us let our life also be a reflection of, of, of God. That was what differentiated Daniel in the in the kingdom of Babylon. Because he just didn't say, I know God. The, his life was purposeful. His life spoke about God. His life showed the grace of God manifested in his life. And that is what we Christians should do. Uh, there is a lot that is happening around on social media, uh, pastors, uh, a lot of a lot of bad blood around some pastors. And if we try, if we look at it deeply, there will be some altar of truth against all these men of God. They are men of God, and Bible had already said it that by their fruit you shall know them. What is their fruit exhibiting? What is their fruit exhibiting? Are they really living a purposeful life? or they are living a life of the world. May God give us more understanding of his word in the name of Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. That's important. That's important. You know, and, and God said, and Jesus already told us how to judge everyone, right? It says by their fruits, yeah. uh, by their fruits, you know that, you know. So orange tree will give will, will produce orange fruit. Apple tree will produce apple, tree, apple fruit, right? So it's not by miracles. It's not by wealth, it's by the fruits. You know, may God help us all in Jesus' name. Uh, yeah. Auntie Banke, anything to add? Oh, no, please. She has said it all. And the same goes with our children. Um, so we want them to gain knowledge. We yeah. pray regularly for them to have gain knowledge. Let's remember to Absolutely. be praying that they should gain understanding in the knowledge they acquire. Yeah. Absolutely. 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 Because what the know that will differentiate them out, right? You, we cannot always be there to cover them. When they're there on their own, when they're there with their mm. friends, they're going to make decisions, right? Mm -hmm. And it's what they know that will guide their decisions. <laughs> and that decision can be a life and death district decision. It can mouse, cut them for life or, or, okay. or, or, or exalt them. You know, it can go either way. So it's, it's what we hand them with when they are with us and when we have the opportunity that will make a difference for them, whether they will achieve purpose or not. Yeah, so, so it is important, you know. We'll pray about it. We'll lead it also. Most of the knowledge our children get is not what we say. It's what yeah. we do because we are the book where the epistle they are reading. You know, we can say everything we want to say. It will enter one here and go out through the other. It's what we leave that they read. That is more powerful than anything we will say, you know. So if we, whatever we know, if we lead it and they see us lead it, that is what will make a difference in in life for them, you know. May God help us be not just be hearers but to be doers of, of that which we know. You know in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm in transit, so you can see that I'm not able to raise my voice. I, I have all the noise behind me. Yes, yeah, that's, we, uh, that's part of everything. That's what we can do. <laughs> well, now we continue to be with you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Have a nice day. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. God bless Thank you, you, ma. Thank you, ma. Have a great remaining of the afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Loretta, enjoy yourself all. Bless Thank you. you so God bless you, sir. Right. We'll get to talk soon. We need to do one on one very soon. It's all, all right. right sir. Take care of yourself. Uh. Love you. Bye-bye, yeah. sir. Yeah. Bye-bye.